Yep. But oh, um, we got to go. We're going to start. Yeah. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. morning again and welcome to Salem's hybrid worship service. Please, if you are online, uh, mute yourself so that we can uh, appreciate the sound that's going on within the sanctuary. My name is Regina Reed and I am a member of Salem Lutheran Church and Pastor Amy is not in town today or not available. We do not believe that it is an accident that you are here. You're here to meet God and we are very pleased for that. Salem's mission is to share God's love, and we welcome you to Salem Lutheran Church and School. If you are on Zoom, please type who you are and where you are watching from. It helps us feel like we are still one community, whether we are in person or online. You may also type public prayer requests into the chat box at any time during the service. This worship is being recorded and will be available on Salem's YouTube channel this week. And if you are watching this on the replay, I welcome you as well. If you need information, more information about Salem and the activities that are going on, please check out our website, salemlutheranglendale.org. I will highlight a couple of activities that are going on. Our Flat Jesus has still been traveling all over this summer, and some of you are continuing to send in your pictures and where Flat Jesus has been traveling with you. Uh, please continue to share those stories, some of the encounters that people have as a result of taking a picture of themselves with this are really quite charming and it allows for very friendly conversations to occur about sharing the good news of Jesus. Uh, secondly, we still have Dodger game tickets available. Our Dodger night is September 23rd, and I believe that Scott Odal still has some tickets available if anyone is still interested. I want to welcome Jim and Diane, Jim Klein and Diane, who are worshiping with us, and they're in the same hemisphere that we are for a change, and so it's wonderful to have you back in town, be able to see your shining faces. Next Sunday uh, is the blessing of the teachers and the backpacks. So encourage your, your youth to bring their backpacks, whether they are kindergartners or college grads, have them come and bring their backpacks and we will ask for special blessings on anyone who's a teacher and for the children's starting up at their academic year. So we begin our worship. God does not reside in one place. God is everywhere. And today in this space, where I am, where you are, this is holy ground. Here at Salem, we believe that no person or created thing is outside the active love and grace of God made known to us in the person of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. 
People of God, open your ears. Come and celebrate the joy of our God, a story of compassion and mercy, of redemption and love, a story passed down from generation to generation so that God's people never forget the wonderful things our God has done. Let us praise God together. Please stand as you are able and join us in our gathering hymns.
We're going to read Psalm 51 uh, responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. Purge me from hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we invite all of the children to come forward for our children's message. Okay, can you hear me? Oh my gosh, we have a lot of children here today. It's great. It is great. A lot of you are starting school soon too, aren't you? All right, sorry. That's great too, huh? Everybody loves to go to school. So today we're talking about lost things. Um, and I have something in my pocket that I frequently lose. What do you think it is? I do have air in my pocket. I don't lose air frequently, but I do have air in my pocket. My phone, my phone is right here. So a good guess though. Coins, coins, that could be something. My keys, that's what I thought you were gonna say. And I think that's the best answer, but it's not the answer. And we could do this all day and no one would ever guess it. So I'm going to show you what I've got in my pocket that I frequently lose. What is this? It's a golf ball. Yeah. I frequently lose golf balls. So how do you think I lose those golf balls? Where do they go? They go in the water. Yeah, they go in the water. They go in bushes, right? Anywhere else? Yeah, sometimes they go over a fence into a street. Hopefully they don't hit a car. There's all kinds of places that golf balls go. And when I lose a golf ball, what do you think I do? Get another golf ball, right? But what do I do before I get another golf ball? Yeah, I try to find the golf ball. But I don't spend a lot of time trying to find the golf ball. I, I spend a little time trying to find the golf ball because it costs $5 each. Um, and, <laughs> but, I spend a little bit of time uh, trying to find the golf ball. Um, now let's talk about when people feel lost. Do you guys ever feel lost? No? What, when do you feel lost? No? When do you feel lost? Yeah? When you're scared? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Sometimes we're, we're really lost. Like if we go to a store and we're looking at something on the shelf that we really like, and then we look around and realize that mom or dad has moved on. 
and you got separated, you can be lost, right? Sometimes it's just that you're scared, you're not, you're feeling alone. Um, there's different ways that you can feel lost, right? Well, Pastor uh, Barsha's sermon today is going to be about shepherds and what they do to find their lost sheep and how they don't stop looking until they find their lost sheep. Um, when you hear that sermon, they talk about the shepherd and the shepherd looking for the lost sheep. Who do you think the shepherd is? The golf person. And the caddy. Yeah, the caddy sometimes looks for the golf ball, but in the Bible, who do you think the shepherd is? Jesus. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's God, right? It's God, it's Jesus. And who do you think the sheep are? People, right? We're all the sheep, right? So when you listen to it and you hear a lot of talk about sheep and shepherds, remember that the shepherd is God and we're the sheep, right? So now this test is going to get just a little bit trickier. Do you guys ever listen in church and hear a word that's kind of a tough word? It's the word Trinity. You ever hear that word? You never hear that word. Yeah. We need you. Hans, the sound isn't very good in here. The kids can't hear the word Trinity. Okay. So you listen closely and you're going to hear the word Trinity a lot in church. Do you know what the Trinity is? Anyone? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? We hear that a lot, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, we think about God or the Father as living in heaven, right? And we think about Jesus as someone that came down, lived on earth, was crucified, died, and was buried, and then he ascended to heaven to be with God, right? But God and Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit right here always with us remembering that god loves us and that god wants us to be safe and wants us to be happy okay so whenever you feel lost you don't have to really look very hard right you can look inside yourself and know that god loves you and that the holy spirit is there to help you when you're lost is that good news so i've got something for each of you whenever you feel lost, I want you to look at the golf ball I'm going to give you and remember that the Holy Spirit is always with you. <laughs> so you come to pick your golf ball. If you lose the golf ball, the Holy Spirit will still be with you. Okay? <laughs> so you guys can come get a golf ball and go back to your seats. Okay? Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson today is from Luke 15. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? 
When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We do have a video uh, message from Pastor Barsh, and we'll wait just a moment to see when that starts. A woman approached her pastor and asked the question, where is the lost and found department in the church? I can't find my glasses, and I just don't think well. I think I left them there. The pastor replied, we, we actually don't have an lost and found department. You might check the secretary's desk. Maybe you'll find your glasses there. People sometimes put things there. After the woman left, the pastor rethought the answer. Actually, the whole church, he said, is a lost and found department. The business of the church is to find the lost. The incident that gave rise to Jesus' parables of the lost sheep and the lost coin today was the attitude of the Pharisees and the teachers of law. They grumbled when they saw tax collectors and sinners welcomed by Jesus. Jesus didn't approve of the behavior of the tax collectors and the sinners, but he demonstrated God's welcome to all people who repent. The religious leaders regarded tax collectors as the least worthers of their society. After all, in Jesus' time, tax collectors were Jews who were traitors. They worked for the Romans. They pocketed money from fellow Jews and gave it to the Romans. In the process, sometimes they lined their own pockets by taking extra for themselves. Tax collectors were the scum of this society, the least important people to go around. The religious leaders saw common people also as sinners. The religious leaders considered themselves better than common folk spiritually, morally, economically. Sinners were regarded as hopeless, lost souls. Like the woman who lost her glasses, the religious leaders didn't see very well. They were short-sighted. Jesus told them parables about the lost sheep and the lost coin to correct their lack of vision. You see, the Use of the term lost has to do with drifting off in the wrong direction because of being inexperienced or naive, like a child who doesn't know any better. In Matthew 18, a parallel passage to this, the context of the parable of the lost sheep is Jesus welcoming a child. Jesus called a child who had put among them the disciples who asked about who was the greatest in the kingdom and said, I tell you truly, unless you become like little children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Take care you do not despise one of these little children, Jesus said. What do you think? If a shepherd, he said, if a lost has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountain to search for the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly, I tell you, he rejoices it more than the 99 that have never went astray. So it is not also the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little children should be ever lost. It's dangerous for a sheep to wander off because he's vulnerable to being attacked by wolves or being turned over on his back. A sheep turned over on its back is totally helpless, unable to right itself without help. A little sheep can lose its footing and fall off a shelf, 
below and there turn on its back and never die and never live because it lost its exposure to elements of nature. That's why the good shepherd leaves 99 sheep and goes out after the one lost sheep. A sheep cannot be lost as it drifts away from the shepherd and the flock. So can sheep. People should be lost if they drift away from the sheep. It's encouraging to hear that God seeks the lost. It's also encouraging that God seeks the least. One sheep seems considerably less important than the 99 that do not wander off, but God thinks otherwise. God is a seeker. He searches until he finds the lost and the least. That's the point of the parable of the lost sheep. It's also the point of the parable of the lost coin. To a rich, powerful person, one silver coin, a drachma as it was called, may seem very little. But to a regular laborer, a drachma was a full day's wager, labor, and therefore very important. To the religious leaders who were in the upper class, a drachma might have seemed like it had little worth, but to a common housewife, a lost drachma was a worth a tedious search. Jesus said God is more like the common laborer and the common housewife than like the rich in the upper class. In the parable of the lost coin, Jesus was saying that each individual created in God's image is worthy of God's attention. God focuses on each of his children because he loves every one of us as if there is only one of us. A pastor was making a home visit in one of his families at the church. How many children do you have? He asked the woman of the house. Well, let me think, she said. I, there, there's Mary, there's Johnny, there's Betty, she started. I just want a number, not their names, the pastor said abruptly. They don't have numbers. They only have names, she said. The woman was closer to the kingdom of God than the pastor. God gives love to each of us as if there were only one of us, and God knows all of our names. As God rejoices over the, each sinner who returns to him, so we should seek to out, out and witness to the lost, rejoicing in their return. As God cares for the least, we too should care for the needy, the hungry, the thirsty, the sick, the parishioners who have been far from us and to those who have overwhelming needs. Jesus said, anything you do for the least of these my people, you did for me. As Max Lucado put it, the sign of the saved is the loved for their least. Jesus' concern for the lost and the least is revolutionary. It turns the value system of the world upside down. A Sunday school teacher once asked her class, what is the last book in the Bible? Johnny, a 10-year-old boy, raised his hand and answered, it's called the book of Revelation." Revolution. Oh, no, that's revelation, not revolution, she replied. And the bell rang and the class left. The following Sunday, the teacher said, I've been thinking all week of what Johnny's answer to the last book of the boy Bible is revelation. But it's really a revolutionary book. As a matter of fact, the whole book of, Re of the Bible, every book of the Bible, is revolutionary. And then she said, does anyone know who wrote the last book of the Bible? Same Johnny, and went up. I think it was St. Paul Revere. Johnny was wrong about St. Paul Revere, but in a certain sense he was right about the Bible being revolutionary. Love for the least and the lost flies directly in the face of the way most people Pastor explained the love of Jesus to the least and the last two sinners to a successful and a businessman who was going to join the church. 
The man replied, if that's what Christianity is all about, I guess I don't want any part of it. I, I'm a self-made man. When you do some, I do something for someone I expect to be paid back and in kind. These people you talk about, the lost and the least, I guess I think they're just lazy. They can't pay back their debts. So they, they aren't worthy of my attention. Since God gives them attention, we have no choice but to do the same, the pastor replied to the man. Since God made it his business to find the lost and the least, that's what the church must do. The church is one big lost and found department. The self-righteous businessman was like the Pharisees and the scribes in our story. He was spiritually short-sighted. He didn't see that we should look at the need for God in everyone's life. The lost and the least have the same need for God that all of us do. The dispressed, displaced, displaced, despised of this world may be better in touch with their need for God than the successful. The down and out may be more open to the call for repentance than the up and out. In addition, whatever we do or don't do for the lost and the least, we are doing or not doing for Jesus Christ. Christianity is all about finding and welcoming the lost and the least. The church really is one big lost I'm going to take away this week tipped over sheep, upside down turtles, and lost golf balls. <laughs> Surely God provides a way for those of us, the least of us, to be found when we are lost too. And that's the good news that we have to share with each other. We are found. Please rise now for our hymn of the day. Uh, today the response for the prayers is your mercy is great alive in the risen christ by the power of the holy spirit we bring our prayers before god who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love gracious god you give the holy spirit to your church filling it with many and varied gifts 
in the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things, both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O God. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day. Hear us, O God. God of love, fill Salem with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us share peace using sign language and stay in your, in your seating area. Peace. Turn and face someone else next to you. Peace with you and also with you. <laughs> you are blessed. When we receive the blessing, we recognize your gifts, the gift of your time, your talents, and your financial treasures. Switch this right. <laughs> At this time, there are several ways that you can share your financial offerings. You can use the Venmo map, Venmo map, Venmo app <laughs> on your phone, uh, which, and you can go to our website, SalemLutheran.org, and use the Give button there and donate um, on our website. And you may, or you may mail a physical check to the church office. And good old fashioned, we have an offering plate here in the narthex in the entry area. Most important things you need to know are that your financial offerings are actually what allows us to continue our ministry in the community and the world. And I want to personally say thank you for all your generosity, both of your time and your financial gifts. Thank you. Let us pray together now as we celebrate that we have gifts that we can share with each other. We give in grateful thanksgiving for all that God has given us. In the upside down world of the gospel, we measure our wealth not by what we have, but what we can give away. Let us give away generously in this offering to bless your church, your people, your creation. Amen. And now we have special music shared with us by Michael and Geneva. And so um, Pastor Amy asked me to just say a word about the song and about Lost and Found. So coincidentally, I spent 30 years playing in a band called Lost and Found. It was a faith-based band. And we always liked having the name Lost and Found because it enabled us to point to the unmerited love of God right like if your lives are like like all of our lives are this way we're not all all good or all bad right we're we're good and bad we're on and off up and down free and enslaved saint and sinner lost and found at the very same time god does for us what we can't do for ourselves so just like pastor barsh said the church is a big lost and found the scriptures are a big story of being lost and found so today we look at Luke chapter 15, 
sometimes people call it the lost chapter of the Bible. It's a lost coin, a lost sheep, and a lost son. But the book, we all can think of it, instead of being about a coin and a sheep and a son, as being about a diligently seeking woman, a faithful shepherd, and a waiting father. Signs of the love of God that knows no limits or boundaries. And the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says in the parables, is like this woman who seeks, like this shepherd who, who diligently looks, and like a waiting father. Now, we didn't read that part today, but I know that you're very familiar with that story um, of the father who welcomes the son back. And so that's what this song is from the perspective of the waiting father. Ever since you went away I've been waiting night and day Oh, I could have made you stay But it would not be love that way Sure, you could go, but just so you know, you are all I've ever wanted. You are all I've ever known, and I've been lost. You have always been free And always a part of me What was I supposed to do? I would not put chains on you Sure, you could go, but just so you know, you are all I've ever wanted. You are all I've ever known. And I've been lost all these years till you came home. My beautiful one, come. The winter's over and the rain is done. I see you now, my lovely one. Singing season has begun. You are years till you came home. Yeah, I've been lost all these years till you came home. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. Our God is compassionate and merciful, full of endless love. Our God does not treat us as our sins deserve or punish us as harshly as God could. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so strong is God's love toward us. And as far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins from us. So be at peace. You are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please join me now as we say our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you go from here this week, remember this. God's love is from everlasting to everlasting, from generation to generation. Just as parents have compassion on their children, so God has compassion on those who fear him, who listen to God's voice, and who do God's will. Go out in the knowledge that the everlasting love of God goes with you. Amen. Please rise as we join together in our sending song, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. Thank you. Before we dismiss you, I want to encourage you to stay for a few minutes of fellowship outside. 
I'm sure that you'll find there's probably ice water out there, which I know will be a welcome relief. And for those of you who are on Facebook or on live online, please stay for a few minutes and have some fellowship time with others who are also worshiping from home. Joy, peace, love your neighbor. Yes. Speak it out.